everybody, I'm Simon, we're here again, Jib, the Vampire Bar Girl, Season 2, Episode 1, we're back, she's back, I won't recap everything, go back to Season 1 and check it out, it's all there, Jib is now in Thailand, she uh, has arrived at her house, her family are there, she's got two bank accounts, one bank account has got about £85,000 in it, her Bangkok bank, this is money she transferred from John's mother's account, she's got a second bank account, oh, old Spitfire, Second bank account and Grung C. Yellow bank, yellow sign. This has got money in it, a couple of million baht from when she was using the ATM and gold and selling her body. So here we have a Thai girl by the name of Jib in Thailand in a village in our nice house. Money in the bank, got everything. The tribe, the two elders, now they're about 50 years old, maybe 55. They're the bosses of the tribe. They weren't, they were going everywhere with the tribe, but they weren't selling their body. They were orchestrating everything. Jib always knew they were more powerful than they seemed and they were up to other things. She's been working with them now for a few years. How old's Jib now? 30, 31, 32, something like that. She has had to come back to Thailand because she stole the money from Britain, from John. She's got to start again. The two elders are in touch. They're over every month or so, every six weeks anyway. But they're in touch. Jib, we trust you now. We're going to bring you into another part of our business that starts uh, in Thailand and you can be our spokeswoman, our partner and take over that part of our business in Thailand and you will earn more money than you were earning in everything else you've ever done before. Huh. Jib is thinking, aha! Now I can earn some serious money. And her eyes light up. I knew those tribe were up to something else, but what? The elders tell Jib that she really needs to be based in Bangkok. And leaves it at that and Jib's okay. Bangkok. New business. Money in the bank, family's okay, doesn't care about anything in the UK, that's past. She's done her vampire training, apprenticeship. Now she's going for her master's degree, the next stage. Mm -hmm. There's more, a lot more. Now this is probably going to involve illegal activity. She goes to Bangkok and she gets herself a moderate hotel and she has to find herself. She's going to rent a condo, she's not going to buy one, she's going to rent a condo. Another thing the elders mentioned to her was she needs an assistant, ideally an uh, American male between 25 and 35 years old. That's all they've said, apart from don't get involved with him. What's that all about? American? Why American? Why 25 to 35? <laughs> so, she searches around. She's getting quite choosy now. She's got money. She looks at many, many condos. Eventually, 
near Chinatown, Yawarad, down by the river, not far from Pat Pong, Patong, Patong. She finds a condo. Uh, it's a complex, a company called Center Point. Two bedroom condo, 35,000 baht a month. Very nice. 50 square meters. Use of a pool, but she's not into swimming. She's tired. She doesn't care about pools or catching the sun. But it's got a gym. That she does like the idea. And more important, it's got very, very good security and parking secure underneath. Her condo is about three quarters of the way up, so maybe 10, 12th floor, something like this. She likes this condo. She signs a contract for six months and pays all the monies. Over the next couple of months, she furnishes it. The furniture in there is not very good, but she furnishes it, gets it all up together, and the elders have instructed her in the meantime to start sending gold back to the UK. Just one piece at a time in a small packages. So one or two bars of gold, small packages to a couple of different addresses in the UK and that they would do the old trick on social media, sell it for 25% more than it's worth on a weekly basis, monthly basis to other Thai people in the UK. Why are these Thai people buying gold? Well, to a Thai person, gold in the hand is better than money in the bank. It's there, they can sell it if they need to. It's like a savings plan, having as much gold as they can, so it's easier to sell on social media. This is what they're doing. So, she starts sending gold bit by bit. That's gonna earn her money, and that'll be enough probably to pay for the condo, the profit of that alone. She's not selling her body. She still craves excitement, so she is starting to go out a bit, starting to socialize, but she's trying to move up in the Thai social ladder a little bit, so she's going to better restaurants, better bars and things, and meeting people. The tribe said to her, find an American assistant. She talks to the elders again, why assistant, what's this for, what sort of assistant? And they explain a little bit to her. They're gonna say, you're gonna need a car, you're gonna need a driver. You're gonna need the person to be American and you can't get too friendly with them because you'll possibly be going through a few assistants. Doesn't make sense, still no, none the wiser. Put them on a salary, a low salary, um, and tell them they're just gonna be doing odd jobs for you, running around, a bit of driving, driving you around. You'll need to get a car. Okay. So, how is she going to find an American assistant? She hasn't got a foggiest at this point. So I think the only way she's going to find American guys that want a job with a salary are foreigners that probably don't want to go back home after their holidays. She starts thinking about this more and more. It's going to be in the bar scene that she doesn't want to go in really but that's where she'll probably find them. Back in the UK, you remember John and his mother. Now John, the only family John had was his mother. No brothers and sisters, but the mother had a sister, so it's John's auntie. That was the totality of his family. Sadly, the auntie passed away. Um, getting old, gone in to sleep peacefully. Huge shock to John. He wasn't that close, but he was reasonably close. He and his mother were the only living relatives and they had to deal with the funeral and all the rest of it. 
John didn't understand all that side of things, so he went to a lawyer. Um, he, this lawyer, he, he'd had, he remembered some dealings with his mother in the past that had used this lawyer, so he'd gone to this lawyer. I told the lawyer what happened, asked the lawyer to take care of everything. He didn't understand it all. The lawyer, fine. He was actually John's mother's lawyer anyway, it turns out, so. Ten days pass, funeral. John takes his mother to her sister's funeral and the lawyer, lawyer had arranged everything. Gone to the funeral, a couple of weeks pass, the lawyer's tried to get in touch with John, but he's really not sure what's going on. He's working a lot, trying to make money again. And sadly, his mother, after losing her sister, sort of gave up on life and mentioned to John that she just wasn't bothered about staying. And literally a few weeks later, John's mum went in her sleep as well. John was devastated, absolutely devastated. Again, he had to go back to this lawyer, said to the lawyer that, can you arrange everything? And I want to stay, can I stay in mum's house? What do I do? And he didn't have a clue. And the lawyer said to him, look, do you want us to take care? We've been trying to get hold of you. Your mother's sister, the house and everything will get sold, sort that all out. And your mother's will sort out the estate and We'll call you back in in a few weeks. When you've got yourself straight, we'll talk about it all. John's like, great. Week and a half later, week, mum's funeral. He's broken, absolutely broken hearted. And back to work. All he can do is work and sleep. He's just day by day at the moment. Month goes by. Jib starts venturing into Soy Cowboy, uh, Pat Pong. She starts talking to Thai girls. She doesn't want to start going around trying to pick a guy up herself. And uh, she starts inquiring about with the girls. Any guys that are American don't want to go home looking for a job. To ring her and she gives she gets some cards she gives the cards to the girls puts the word out she's looking for a driver American back to the UK John yes the call from the lawyers he goes in sees the lawyer a lawyer sits him down and says right starts talking to him the mum's sister she had a house she had money Everything was sold, cleared up the lot. And John, his mum was first in the will of the sister, and then John was named as well. Everything came to John. Suddenly, £450,000 was on the table for John from the auntie. Now, John's not fussed about money. That's what you can tell from what happened with Jib. But there he is, he's got £450,000 from an auntie coming through to him. His mum's estate also has to be wound up. The house has been put in John's name. It turns out the mum had premium bonds, bonds. She had shares, stock market, about 80,000 pound, as well as the house. So suddenly he's got 530,000 pound and the house. He's set up for life, fantastic. There is a sort of happy ending there. But the lawyer starts quizzing him. He said there was more money, but it went, judging by the bank account's details. And then John explains to the lawyer, very briefly, what had happened. The lawyer started banging stuff around his desk. And John's thinking, oh, what's going on? And the lawyer then explains he had had a bad experience himself with a Thai woman and he was livid. He said to John, I want you to tell me the whole story. I want to know about this. 
I might be able to help you. John sits with him for an hour, tells him everything. The lawyer's furious, he just cannot believe it. The lawyer says to John, I will try and see if I can help you regain or try and get some of this money back. See if we can get some justice. And I'll only, I'll charge you a bare minimum, just a few percent if we succeed. If we don't succeed in anything, I won't charge you. Wraps up the mum's estate, the auntie's estate, John set up, the lawyer's got lots of details. The lawyer says to him, I will contact you for more information if I need it. But just leave it and I'll see what I can find out. Off John goes, back home, very sad. He's now got money, he's fine. He's gonna treat himself to a new Xbox or PlayStation. 530,000 pound. He's thinking of an Xbox or PlayStation, not sure which. Hmm. Jib, hunting for the American. What's it all about? Why does she need an American? Don't know. We'll leave it there. I'll catch you on the next one. Bye.